Hey, it's Will here. I wanted to go over the node Postgres readme. So the first thing you see on the readme is a simple example, and it uses one client connection as opposed to client pooling, which we'll get into in a little bit. So Postgres exposes a client function here, and you just call new PG client. It will use the environment variables that the Postgres tools use. So like PG pass and PG.env in your home directory. Once we constructed that client object, we want to make the connection to the database. You just call connect here. Uh, we have a node callback with error and that will let you know if anything happened, uh, maybe wrong password or uh, couldn't find the server, something to that effect. Uh, once we know we're good, we can query, and this statement right here is very simple, not even selecting from a table. We're going to select Brian C as text as name. So in our result object, this will come back as a JSON object uh, name colon Brian C. Once we're done querying, we're going to call the end function. You can give it a callback and it will let you know if anything happened in the disconnect logic. So very simple here. Recommend using the single client connection when you're writing a simple script to, I don't know, modify data, do some sort of mapping, something local, not in production. So the next topic in the readme is client pooling and also the recommended way to use this module. Most people use this module in a Express app or Happy or some, some sort of HTTP web application. Pooling is important because it saves you time and allows you to do work faster. So you can do more queries per second. You can have active connections to the database rather than initializing a new connection each time. They note here that it takes about 20 to 30 milliseconds to make a new connection because there's a, a handshake process. Postgres can also only support a limited number of clients. Um, it depends on the server that the database is actually running on. It also depends on the web application server because both sides have to take up resources to represent the connection in memory, uh, in, the, in buffers, in the kernel, all that sort of stuff. Postgres, you can only do one query at a time per connected client. So you can't really pipeline your queries through a single client because you can only do one. They're going to have to go sequential back and forth. So you can imagine that, you know, only using one client object like the example here isn't the best idea. So that brings us to the client pooling. So the configuration for the client pooling is a little more advanced than the simple client connection. You give it the user, the name of the database, the password, the host, the port, but then you also give it the maximum number of connections in the pool. 10 is a good number to start out with with development and production unless you're already getting an insane amount of traffic then you'll need to tweak this number and figure out what's a good number for the amount of RAM and resources where your database server is running. Idle timeout milliseconds uh, default is 30,000 or 30 seconds. It's how long the client is going to stay open until it's how long the client is going to stay open before it closes if it didn't get any uh, queries during that time frame. 30 seconds is probably good. You can change this depending on what your needs are. So once we have the config, we'll create a new pool, new pg.pool with the config argument. Then we're going to connect to the pool to get a client out of it. So the signature for the callback here is error, client, and done. I'm going to go through each, each of those. So error is there's a problem fetching from the pool. Um, 
could be any number of things, but this will let you know what it is. You can respond appropriately in your, in your application. Once you get past that, then you know there's no error. You can use the client, and you can do as many queries on the client as you want. Um, it's not like you have to do one and done. You can do as many as you want or need to. So this one's just simple, like the example above. Select the number one here, it's parameterized. Data type is integer, and the feet column name is gonna be number. Then the same signature as before for the result callback, function, error, and result. Error will let you know if there is an error. Result will contain the results. Now you'll notice that we called done as soon as, like at the very, the very first statement of this callback function is done. And that's very important because it releases this client back to the pool. And that's how you increase your concurrency with pooling. You get the client resource, you use it, and as soon as you're done, you call done, releasing it back to the pool for use in some other some other part of your application. So another user requests can get that client and you know find their orders or whatever. So very important to call done first. Another reason you want to call it first is in JavaScript, as you might know, you know something something long and complex like this, you you know row zero might be undefined and you might throw you know, try to read number property off of that undefined and the call stack will blow up. But if you'll remember, nothing executes after that error throws. So if you had done down here, you may not release the client back to the pool and that's not good at all. That will, if, it, if that happens enough, then you'll run out of client connections and you'll be in trouble. It's the same thing here. You can just operate on the results. Um, you can check. Usually this error here is uh, maybe bad syntax here. Um, but even if, you know, if your query didn't match anything, then uh, that's not an error. Other examples of errors would be trying to, like, validating a uh, constraint. So if you have, like, a unique constraint, if you tried to insert something that wasn't unique, you'd get that as an error. Um, usually that's where, where these errors happen. Uh, so then another feature of the pool is you can add a general on error listener and the callback there gives you the exact error. It's a um, error type in node, so it'll have a message and a stack, stack trace. And it'll tell you about the client. And I don't know, let's see. says that the client which admitted the original error so you'll be able to tell a little more information about the client maybe what query it was running when um, not sure but that's always good to have in your logging more more error logging the better all right so that's all I really wanted to talk about just going over the simple client connection options you have in node Postgres